Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalaran, and if you've been enjoying Warlords Adrenal like I have, you all will know that the human racial is probably one of the strongest racials for PvP. If you have capability to grab a human as your racial for your class, then most cases people go for it. But what if you are tired, completely tired of the human being OP and you want to try something different, some other race class combination. But at the same time, even if you're not playing human, you still want to find something that's viable where other players looking for threes will look at you, but they'll look at your race, look at your class, and it'll still invite you into those threes group so you can finally push for that rating. Well, in today's video, we will be exploring certain classes and specific specs and what those classes and specs can do outside of human while still staying viable. So let's get on today's video with the five classes that I was able to find in order to make for today's video. The first class that is being covered is the Frost Death Knights. Frost Death Knights already have high burst and great sustain, which makes them viable to play as human or non-human. Humans, as you will know, have a little bit extra burst because you are able to run two trinkets instead of just one in terms of damage, but because of death knights and just how much damage they can deal, the burst isn't going to vary that differently. As a death knight, especially as a frost spec, you can also stack versatility to increase your overall sustained damage. So as a class and a spec of frost death knight, you are not always tied to just the burst. You also have decent sustained damage, which you can dish out outside of the burst. Draenei is a great option to play as the DK because it raises you 5% more strength which is overall adds on to your sustain damage and your burst damage as a class so that is one of the outside options outside of human that can be applied for a DK. DKs benefit from stack and versatility very greatly and because of that they have a lot more race options to choose from but it depends on which races you would choose for a frost death knight. Uh, depends on what kind of capabilities you can add to them as in what kind of racials and racial passives can you provide to the frost death knight because of the class and race you are running. When it comes to selecting your race as a death knight, outside of human, you have a couple options that will allow you to benefit and better yourself within the game. You have the Draenei, which is probably the best option on the alliance side. As a Draenei, you have extra benefit to your main stats, intellect, agility, and strength, where you get a lot more strength, 5% to be exact, to yourself as a DK. That's probably the only class outside of human that gives you any damage increase. A gnome is another option but it's fairly weak because you honestly have CC reduction while sitting in a frost presence so then the gnome ratio becomes fairly useless. On a horde side the orc is one of the best options out there because you have a resistance to stuns which combined with the frost presence basically makes you less likely to be sitting the stuns in terms of CC so less likely for you to be peeled when you're training down the healer. And you have the racial in order to, addition, uh, to add additional damage onto other targets as well. The next option, probably the best option on the horde side, is actually the Blood Elf. As a DK, you can get Strength Veins. As a Death Knight, you can get Strangulate, which is a stun, but you will also have the Blood Elf Racial, which is a silence, which will also refund your Runic Power. And as a Frost Death Knight's currently in the meta, your Runic Power dictates just how much burst you have. So being able to have an AoE blanket silence onto your character, especially something as scary as a DK that's training down the healer, and having the ability to recharge your resources just a little bit makes you for a very flexible and a very powerful DK altogether. The next class is the Windwalker and Mistero Monk. One of the best parts about a monk is the fact that it stacks versatility and because of the fact that it stacks so much versatility, when you don't play human, you end up stacking a bit more versatility for your class. Versatility accounts for a huge amount of sustained damage, so when choosing to play a monk as a non-human, you are actually benefiting highly from that. Racials can be very beneficial outside of human in terms of minimizing CC, which helps you live a bit longer. First of all, because monks do die in a lot of CC and can get peeled by CC. And the other portion is you just simply spend more time dealing damage into your targets. It's actually a fair trade of going non-human full versatility and stacking as much versatility as possible rather than playing human with a high end burst. So you have great sustainability as a monk. You will have some decent bursts as well. You definitely won't have as high of a burst as a human, but it actually counts for a lot more damage if you just ignore the burst altogether and go for amazing sustainability. A monk will basically allow you to play almost any race class combination out there. So let's review the class and racial combinations that you can work with a monk. So when deciding which class to play for a monk, on the lines you have a couple options. 
you have the Draenor Monk, which allows you to get a bit more agility, but it's actually not as good. Agility doesn't scale as well as strength. Probably the best option is the Gnome. The Gnome Racial allows you to get out of roots, so basically because you are sacrificing Cheater Peter as an offensive ability rather than a mobility ability, you only have one way every 30 seconds to get out of roots. So giving you the Gnome Racial allows you to not sit in roots where you can chase after the mages and the druids and be a little bit more helpful within a fight. This is really the best options on the Alliance side. As a Mistweaver, you can go Gnome or a Night Elf or even a Draenei. The amount of intellect and the extra heal you get from a Draenei is actually fairly nice. And Night Elf can basically dodge one of the spells that would normally cause you to die. On a Horde side, you can play an Orc as a Windwalker and you're basically going to set your stuns for a lot less. Windwalkers basically do die mostly in stuns, so being able to set stuns for a lot less longer helps you live a bit longer. And that is alright, not the best option out there, doesn't really have anything that benefits it highly either. Neither does the Tauren. The Troll Haze buff is alright, but again, nothing game changing. The Blood Elf I would say is probably the best option, especially when you're playing as a Windwalker. As a Windwalker, the Blood Elf can regen his own energy and get an AoE silence onto a target, allowing you to be a little bit more deadly and apply a little bit more pressure, especially if it's sustained pressure. The next class we're going to be talking about is the Discipline Priest, especially the Discipline Priest Spec. The Spec stacks versatility, so off the bat, with the stats alone, you can tell that it's for non-human use from beginning. High output on healing is what Discipline Priests rely on, and they can use other racials for utility. The human racial doesn't really help in terms of healing since there isn't really such a thing as burst healing, but instead the Discipline Priests can grab other racials in order to make their healing a little bit better, whether it be not having to use a trinket and saving that for later, maybe even being able to dodge a spell that would rather kill you or a CC that would rather make you incapable of healing your friendlies. There's actually a lot of different options for a Discipline Priest in terms of racials and they are only stronger if you're running a non-human. So let's take a look at some of those racial options out there. So when taking a look at Discipline Priest, you're looking for something that gets utility to be added to the actual heal mechanics. You have the Dwarf, which can get you out of silences while not having to use a trinket of the bat. So it gives you almost like a pseudo trinket against silences. A very powerful option on the Alliance side. You also have the Night Elf, which is probably one of the best options because you can dodge a CC if you time it right using Shadow Meld. Outside of that, you get a decent buff from crit and haste, which discipline both benefits depending on what time of day you're playing, whether it be day or night. The Draenei is okay, the Gnome is alright, but that's really the two best options on the Alliance side, the Dwarf or the Night Elf. On the Horde side, you have the Undead, which allows you to get out of fears a bit more, and fears being one of the CCs fairly common in the game, this actually works out to be one of the better options. You have the Tauren, which gets you a benefit to your critical heals, as well as gives a priest a stun, the only kind of priest that can even have a stun. So as a priest, you only have a fear and a silence in your option of CC utilities, but adding that stun can help you line up a little bit more damage and peel for yourself a bit easier when it comes to getting trained by DPS-based classes. So I feel like Tauren and Undead are the best options on the Horde side. If you do want to go a little bit more offensive, you can go Blood Elf. The Blood Elf will give you another silence that can be used as an AoE if you are going offensive. But in the most cases, you are going to be playing defensive in a long base game. So Undead and Tauren are probably the better options in my opinion. The next spec we're going to be talking about is Survival Hunter. Again, just like the Disc Priest, this spec of Hunter highly benefits on versatility and that is the stat that you stack when you play Survival Hunter. So this Survival Hunter is great for non-human use, allowing you more options uh, to play rather than human. What's great about Survival Hunters is they don't really have any real burst, like let's say a Death Knight or a Paladin or a Rogue, which is something both of those classes rely. Since survival hunters don't have that much burst, they have amazing sustain, so because of that sustain, you max some versatility, so you have a lot more options when it comes to playing which racial you want to play for your hunter. So you can use some of the racials out there for utility while not losing too much on the damage, which is probably the best combination altogether. So let's take a look at some of the class combinations that you can use for survival hunter. When it comes to playing a hunter on the alliance side, the dwarf racials don't really help you deal damage, the gnome isn't available until legion, the drain at 5% extra damage to 5% extra agility isn't as helpful as you might think, the worgen extra movement speed is actually nothing in order to do, being able to help you deal a little bit more damage, 
I feel like the Night Elf is probably the most damaging one outside of the human. As a Night Elf, you are actually able to shadow melt, dodging abilities that would kill you, and ignoring certain CCs as you are able to dodge them by fading into the night, allowing you more uptime in order to be able to run around CC and deal damage to your targets. Also, if you play during the night, you have 1% extra haste onto yourself as a racial, so queuing arenas during the night will allow your poison ticks to actually proc a little bit more often. On the Horde side, the number one spot, actually two classes or two races share it. You have the Orc, which allows a little bit more extra damage to the pet and a racial for more burst, but as we talked about it, the burst for survival hunters isn't all that high, so that kind of goes by the wayside. And then you have the Blood Elf, which allows you to restore your focus and be able to silence targets around you, so you can play it a lot more offensively and be able to time CC back to back with multiple different comps. On the second spot, you actually have the Undead and the Troll. I feel like the Undead has a uh, a dog in this fight because of the a bit of shadow damage that it can deal, because of your mastery, and because of multi multitudes and multitudes of different ways you can do damage, from your pet to your pet attacks, to your auto attacks, your poison ticks, your fire ticks, your shadow ticks from a black arrow. You have a lot of different damages coming from a lot of sources, so you have a lot more chances to proc the extra shadow damage. And I feel like the troll is another competitive option because of the amount of haste it can offer you during the racial of Berserk. Berserk allows you to add a little bit more haste, causing your text to start scaling forward and taking down your targets a bit quicker. Which is probably the best form of burst that a survival hunter has, rather than increasing the damage you deal, allowing your poison text to tick a lot faster, melting your targets a little bit quicker. So those are the best options for survival hunter in terms of racials. The last class we'll be talking about in today's video is the Arms Warrior. Arms Warriors have high burst, so adding a bit more sustain to your playstyle is an interesting combination. So altogether, as an Arms Warrior, you get great cleave damage, mass damage already as is, and great sustain overall makes for an interesting playstyle while not losing out on anything as a class altogether. You can utilize other rations to actually perform a little bit better with, with its sustained playstyle. Versatility isn't the stat that you will stack for this class, but it is the stat that will help you out a lot. So as an arms warrior, you can actually choose a multitude of different race class combinations, but only if you will actually improve on your playstyle all that much. You still can go human as an arms warrior, but to go let's say a gnome or a Night Elf or even a Draenei is actually a viable option. So when deciding to play a class that you want to play where it doesn't include to play a human but can be beneficial, you can always go together with an Arms Warrior for more damage. So when taking a look at some of the race class combinations that will help you play better as a warrior outside of human, I feel like the Gnome is probably the best option. So. Outside of different CCs that are in the game, a root is something that a warrior is very susceptible to. So when you're going for the high amount of sustained damage where you're not really looking for your burst all the time, using the Rome racial to be able to get out of roots it helps you out tremendously as a warrior. You also have a bit higher resource pool of rage so you can store up a little bit more rage in order to be able to dish out a little bit extra damage. Another option out there for the alliance is the Draenei. Add a new 5 extra strength in order to be able to dish out more damage and strength fairly well scales for warriors altogether. You can also apply the better healing that you get as a Draenei in order to benefit yourself in the 2v2 games where you know you're about to take intense amount of damage in order to heal yourself a little bit better. On a horde side you have a lot more options. For an orc you'll basically have sustain and burst using a racial and you're less likely to die in stuns. As an undead and tauren you don't really benefit much out of it either. Troll doesn't really give you any help with the haste but the blood oath on the other hand restores your rage a bit and gives you an AoE blanket silence when it comes to great potential when training healers. You can actually be one of the strongest one of the best warriors out there when playing a blood oath. So those are the options out there for both the Alliance and the Horde, how to play a warrior outside of the human racial. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I hope I was able to give, bring you guys some of the viable options for non-human classes that you might want to play in the game. Those are, again, very viable options that you can play and most players will find these options, you know, suitable. So if you don't want to play human but you want to play something viable, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. So, thanks so much for watching, let me know what you think in the comments below, what are some of the other combinations that you think are fairly useful, leave them in the comments below if you have any ideas. My name is Dalrin, and I'll see you guys in the next video.